What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Monday, and welcome to this week's episode of Rant TNH. I am Christian from Theo and Harris. And I'm Anna from Theo and Harris, and today we're going to see if Christian can change my mind as to whether or not watches are a waste of money. Let's do it. All right, before we jump in, a quick wristwatch check. What are you wearing today, Anna? I'm wearing my Universal Genève pull router, tried and true. You guys have seen it many times. We actually have two watches like this in the shop right now. I think both have pretty different dials. Well, it's a it, it's a Theo and Harris favorite. I mean, the Pole Router is one of the most probably value-packed uh, watches, right, in the yep, vintage kind of that. segment. A uh, sure. very important designer in Gerald Genta, mm -hmm. the same gentleman who designed the uh, Royal Oak for Admar Piguet and the Nautilus for Patek Philippe. So uh, between that and the, the overall construction movement, Pole Routers are great. Uh, I am wearing another watch that uh, Gerald Genta actually also has a connection to. Oh. This is, yeah, this is Omega's Constellation. Um, this is in solid yellow gold with a beautiful kind of, uh, I believe they call it coin-edged bezel mm -hmm. here. It's like fluted, but it really looks like the edge of a nickel or a dime or something like that. So uh, it's a cool little a cool little detail. Also uh, available in the watch shop at theowenharris.com. Probably one of the most interesting Omega Constellations we've been lucky enough to offer to date. So that's it. For sure. All right. Um, let's get into it. You love watches. Yeah. We know. I this. love watches. Disclaimer before we even yes. start this conversation, we both love watches, but, but but this is a pretty relevant question. And there was a point in time in which you held the opinions that you were about to share. Yeah. Right? Before it's Theo and Harris. When, point when, of shame for me, yes. Right. When you had no idea that watches could be interesting or could be valuable. Yeah. Right? Like, totally. I, I remember having this conversation like four years ago. Absolutely. You were like, you like watches? I was like, why? Like, that's f***ing stupid. I don't get it. Fast forward four years and we have the company, but... Right. Um, there are good points to be made, you know, in, in, in kind of furtherance of this idea that watches are a waste of money. So uh, let's get into it. Anna, you know, what's your position? First and foremost, watch geek, you guys, you watch geeks love to pitch this idea that watches are, are tools, you know, they're practical, you know, they don't just tell the time, they're perpetual calendars sometimes, and they show the date function, they're, they're chronographs, they can, they, can, they can time things. My iPhone does the same thing, you know, and, and, and better. It's, it's easier to use. It's, I, I'm accuracy, you know, don't, I don't know if that matters, but it's in my pocket. I can do everything. I take it with me wherever I go. I don't need a watch to do those things. They're antiquated. I mean, the functions that they serve are, are done better on the devices that we have readily at our fingertips. Okay. First of all, you're wrong. Watches are not antiquated. At the highest stage, Omega is still the official timekeeper of the Olympic. One of the most important and competitive and precise sporting events in the world, right? I can't think of a better demonstration of, of respecting proper timekeeping than that designation. Take it away from a chronograph or a timer. Uh, look at a dive watch, right? Okay. Divers do not use iPhones underwater. Fair. Right, divers yes. still until today, and I know this more so from fishing and people who do, uh, you know, lobster fishing or lobstering or whatever it is. Sure. <laughs> they still wear watches, whether it's over a wetsuit uh, or whether it's on their bare skin. Um, usually by uh, Rolex or by Tudor with their new introduction of the Black Bay, or even Seiko's SKX. You know, in that entry level price point. Professionally, which mm -hmm. is really very important, it's absolutely untrue that watches are antiquated and and inadequate. Okay, if you want to move into casual usage, right, right. Uh, every day. So now let's shift gears, okay? Let's okay. take a step away from this, you know, professional pedestal that, in my point, already proves the supremacy of timekeeping in a mechanical watch and look mm -hmm. at, you know, everyday usage, right? The right, average right. Joe cooking a steak, you know, and, and timing it with his chronograph. Do you mean to tell me that uh, the difference between his mechanical, you know, uh, speed master and your phone is going to make a difference in his stake. We're talking about decimals of a second, right? Yes, right, right. your phone is, you know, it's, it's the atomic clock, right? Your phone is more accurate technically mm -hmm. than my Rolex Daytona or than my Speedmaster, right? right? But does that even matter, right? The difference is negligible, mm -hmm. okay? And because it's negligible, it doesn't matter. The point that they're, you know, inadequate is invalid. Okay, fine. Let's say we put them on an equal playing field. They're just as capable as performing those basic functions as one another. Right. How in the world do you justify that price? How can you say that they're worth the money? I mean, we're talking thousands of dollars. No, that's completely unfair. You're comparing apples and oranges here. Okay. A Timex Weekender chronograph, if we're going to look at the functionality of, of, of a chronograph, of, of, a, of a stopwatch, okay, which your phone has and, and the Timex Weekender has, that's a $50 watch, right? 
Right. So you want to selectively compare it to a Rolex Daytona, which is no longer just a chronograph. You know, it becomes an art piece. You want to compare it to a Paddock 5070. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an $80,000 watch, right? That goes beyond its function, right? The debate of whether or not a truly handmade chronograph, like let's say um, a Longazona 1815 chronograph, okay, right. a $40,000 watch secondhand, is worth the money, is entirely irrelevant to whether or not watches are worth the money. Okay. Right? Whether or not you view the value in hand craftsmanship, whether or not you view the value in in-house architecture and the redevelopment of a mechanical stopwatch mm. is irrelevant. I happen okay. to love it. And for those of you out there that aren't watch geeks and you don't get it or you don't love it, that's fine. But it has nothing to do with whether or not watches themselves as entities are worth the money. They are entirely different entities for a different conversation, hmm. okay? But if we're talking about the function of a chronograph versus the function of your phone, you right. jump from Timex Weekender to a, a, a Siegel chronograph, and if you want to go okay. from Chinese to Swiss, you can go into an Eta chronograph, okay? Hmm. And if you want to go from, you know, Swiss mass produced into Swiss handmade, you can go into Georges Le Colt, you know, okay. and you can continue up the ladder. Right, but apples to apples, it's 50 bucks. And frankly, the phones are the ones that are pretty much so overpriced. Okay, fine, but but what makes you defend these things so ardently? Like, as if they're people, what gives them this special meaning? And then and then at the same time, you bash on brands like Daniel Wellington and my iPhone. What what makes fashion watches worth 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 shitting on and rants if watches are worth it? Because. And this is, I guess, the, the point where I'll give you a little leniency, right? Your, your point is, your contention, this whole argument is, you know, watches are a waste of money. Right. And I do think that some watches are a waste of money, right? I do think that there are outliers in this field, like Daniel Wellington, um, like Michael Kors in many ways, um, like so many little fashion watches, cheaply made watches that don't have the reliability, like I said before, right? Um, for me, reliability in watches, because I genuinely do look at them as, you know, companions, as tools in many ways, mm -hmm. um, is paramount, right? And Daniel Wellington's have a, you know, notorious, you know, uh, uh, background up for, you know, the ones that were being poorly made and being uh, susceptible to water damage and damage overall, right? So forget mm -hmm. that stuff. You, can, you, you can't compare that. There are wonderful entry-level watches, like I said before, in the $50 range, um, and even less in some instances, right? That can, you know, take a lick in and keep on ticking, like Timex's classic phrase, sure. <laughs> right? But watches as a whole, you know, every watch that is worth owning, in my opinion, uh, whether from 50 bucks to $150,000, and I've said this before, becomes, because it is so useful and it is something that you are so inclined to wear on a regular basis because of its, you know, utility, it becomes, they become vessels for emotions, for people, mm. right? They become these entities that we don't want to replace, right? I would think you were f***ing crazy if you offered me 30 grand for my Rolex Datejust because it ain't happening, right? If I was homeless, I mean, if you're forced to make a decision on something like this, then you have to say, okay, materials, material, move on and sell it, right? Right, but right. But barring those circumstances, those, those feelings, you know, watches represent, and it's not just me, I know this from clients and friends and fellow geeks, they become a part of you, right? Right. Your Omega becomes your grandpa. You know, your mm -hmm. Breitling becomes, you know, uh, that, that, that trip to Spain with your dad, right? Or whatever it might be. And phones, as I learned today in the Sprint store, you know, <laughs> and I've said this always, are completely replaceable. Mm -hmm. I could not care less about the phone itself, right? right? I was more concerned in the store about getting my photos over to my new phone. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, although, you know, a watch doesn't have photos, it's the memories. Right. right I'm concerned right. about my photos, my videos, my messages being lost in the transfer of a bullshit, worthless phone. Right. Right. That's how I feel about a watch. It is the material manifestation or home to those memories. So that's why you're wrong. That's why watches are worth the money. And that's it. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit that. Please don't forget to slam that like button and subscribe to our channel at Theo and Harris.